Welcome to the reading of the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter of 2022. Welcome to Lesson 2 on the series of Genesis. It's titled The Fall and is ready for teaching on April 9. And my name's Percy Harold. Thursday, April 7. Human Destiny. Read Genesis chapter 3, verses 15 to 24. As a result of the fall, what happened to Adam and Eve? Genesis 3, beginning at 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live for ever, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. While God's judgment of the serpent is explicitly identified as a curse in Genesis 3.14, God's judgment of the woman and of the man is not. The only time the word curse is used again is when it is applied to the ground in Genesis 3.17. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. That is, God had other plans for the man and the woman as opposed to the serpent. They were offered a hope not offered to him. Because the woman's sin is due to her association with the serpent, the verse describing God's judgment of the woman was related to the judgment of the serpent. Not only does Genesis 3.16 immediately follow Genesis 3.15, but the parallels between the two prophecies also clearly indicate that the prophecy concerning the woman in Genesis 3.16 has to be read in connection to the messianic prophecy in Genesis 3.15. Let's read that Genesis 3.15 and 16. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. God's judgment of the woman, including childbearing, should therefore be understood in the positive perspective of salvation, as we compare this with 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love and holiness with self-control. Because the man's sin is due to listening to the woman instead of listening to God, the ground from which man had been taken is cursed, we read in verse 17 of Genesis chapter 3. As a result, man will have to work hard, as we read in verses 17 to 19, and he will then return to the ground where he comes from. Verse 19, something that never should have happened, and that was never part of God's original plan. 
it is significant that against this hopeless prospect of death, Adam turns then to the woman where he sees the hope of life through her giving birth. As we read in verse 20, And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. That is, even amid the sentence of death, he sees the hope of life. As any loving parent, God had wanted only good for them, not evil. But now that they knew evil, God was going to do all that he could to save them from it. Thus, even amid these judgments, all hope was not lost for our first parents, despite their open and blatant disobedience of God, even though they, living truly in paradise, had absolutely no reason to doubt God, to doubt God's words, or to doubt His love for them. And so, to finish today, though we tend to think of knowledge in and of itself as good, why is that not always the case? What are some things that we are better off not knowing? This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.